United States Steel Corporation. Few fireworks displays are more spectacular than drama that is steel name. The story of hot metal and cold steel is fascinating from start to finish. Story begin with a blast as rock explodes and the raw material of steel are tossed from the earth. The rock is taconite and the prize inside is crude iron ore. We get at it by grinding the rock to powder and separating the ore with powerful magnets. Then we form and heat the ore into marble-sized pellets that will later be converted to iron. Form bituminous coal, we create coat to peel the iron-making furnace. We crush the cold seal it in airtight ovens, bake for 12 to 16 hours, and remove it from the oven as solid carbon fuel. The fuel and pellets come together in the bot, where we add just enough limestone to remove impurities. From below, a continuous blast of superheated air combusts the coals, intensifying the feed and change raw materials into molten iron. It reaches a temperature of 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. We tap this blistering brood into giant submarine ladles that ride on rails to the basic oxygen shock where iron will turn into steel. In this fast-paced sequence, up to 250 tons of steel can be made to order in less than 45 minutes. We begin the steel making process by dumping recycled steel scrap into the basic oxygen furnace and adding hot iron. Sparks steal the show when high purity oxygen is blow into the mix at supersonic speed and molten iron becomes motel steel. Now we're ready to create the custom blend that makes steel the most widely used metal on the planet. We tap molten steel from the bottle into a ladle. Then for most of our steels it's on to the vacuum degassing where they are made highly formable. The focus then shifts to forming and finishing, which determine even more of steel's characteristics. The first step in this sequence is to position the ladle above a massive tun dish or funnel that feeds a continuous caster containing molds that shape the steel. The motel steel now 3000 degrees Fahrenheit is channeled from ladle to tun dish to caster, where it cools to a red hot solid. The shape of the mold determines the shape of the semi-finished products that come out of the caster. And size, most US steel plants make sheet products of our caster's output slabs. Typically 8 to 9 inch thick and 3 to 5 feet wide as they exit the caster slabs are cut into sections up to 40 feet long and stacked to wait further processing than it onto the hot strip mill. transforming steel slab into steel sheet. Slabs are reheated to 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit and descale before running through a series of roofing stands that make them thinner and longer. Then they cycle through finishing stands where they are rolled even thinner. Finally, they are cooled and rolled into coils that may be thousands of feet long, but only fractions of an inch thick. A far cry from chunky retackingle that come out of the caster, and the entire process is untouched by human hands. Controlled instead by operators using state-of-the-art automated equipment in pulpits that overlook the Asian. Next, we move to the pickle line where coils move through an acid bath that cleans the surface. Special finishing beginning with cold rolling to make them even thinner. At 
At that point, coils may be shipped or go on to one or more additional finishing processes coating to make the steel resistant to corrosion. Tinning to further reduce the gauge and add the tin coat we commonly see on kin goods.